it's insane how crazily loved a text editor can be. You know, you really think about it. There's people that argue about text editors. Which one is better? This is that. It is kind of stupid, but Vim, truly, I love Vim. It is something that you can't understand until you begin using it. So I'm just going to explain to you guys why I love Vim. So number one is just the efficiency. Like, I'll just quickly list it off. Efficiency, it's just so efficient at doing certain things. And I'll show you guys a bit later. But it's extremely efficient, customizable, you know, compared to... Like, I wonder if I can show it, like, do I have Vi? No, I don't have Vi. But um, Vi is, like, the baby version of Vim. But, damn, I'm trying to think of... Maybe if I do... Nah. I don't know how to show you the default Vim. I have a very specific Vim configuration. But in this instance, like if you look at a default Vim, you know, you don't have this normal uh, bar at the bottom. And I've got all these different uh, keys to do different things. Um, but like even I haven't even customized it that much. There's people that go insane, just the insane amounts of customizability, but extremely customizable. I mean, it's free and open source. What, what more can you say? Um, number three, it's portable, basically works on anything. Any system, like if you're ever working on like random systems, Vim will be on it. Like if there's anything that will be on it, it'll probably be Vim. I don't know why this is just the standard, but it's extremely lightweight and it just works well. So everyone just loves Vim. Um, number four, extremely powerful. You can literally add so much to it. Again, my Vim setup is still like basically nothing. Like I can show you my Vim RC real quick. But I just have very basic stuff like, okay, you know, you know syntax highlighting, uh, indents for C, show the command line, you know, like just very basic stuff. <clears throat> and then I have like my personal, like these are like my, this is like the meat, like the personal key binds where if, okay, if I press F4 and it's this file, if it's a LaTeX file type, then, you know, compile just automatically. It just does it. It's insane. Um, or if it's um, shift f4 then do this and do that and in just like you can do make it do so much insane stuff i just love it i truly love it um and like you can have like plugins once you like i, I don't think i even touch plugins but there's like syntax highlighting highlighting oh well that's already in there but like code completion there's just all this kind of stuff that honestly if you start looking into it i can't even be the best demonstrator because i like to keep my setup like very simple if i don't need it then why do i add it you know that's my philosophy but you know if you're interested look up vim best vim plugins you'll see some insane stuff you'll see some insane stuff that is just like magic and then here we have probably the honestly this is the main reason why i love them is the macros the macros are actually insane so i'm going to show you a little like a little thing that you can do in Vim pretty easily, but if you were to do it in basically anything else, it'd be pretty difficult. So I'm gonna paste here a poem. This is a poem, a uh, very famous Hungarian poem. It's called the Sorzot. Um, well, yeah, Sorzot. And I had to learn this and recite this um, at one point. And you know, you paste it in. It's like, oh, okay. You know, it's got um, like I want it separated. I want to make it look, you know, nice. In Vim, it's very easy. You know, you press Q, that starts a macro, or like you press Q and then you press a random letter. Let's do B, B. So now it start recording a macro at line B. And you know what? I wanted that every four lines, it creates a space because that's the structure of the poem, that every four lines, it's kind of like a different topic. So what we're gonna do is press four down and Oh, you know what? I messed this up. We're going to... Oh, no. <laughs> we're going to press 3 down, press O to create a new line, and then we're going to go to the line down under, and then that's it. We press... We go out back to normal mode, press Q, and then that's our macro. Then if I do at B, it does the same thing. Now, approximately... I don't know how many verses there are. Probably like seven more. So if I press 7 at B, and it's done. Oh, you know, maybe like 4 at B. Yeah, done. This is something that, you know, but like the normy way would be like, okay, you know, you just go here, boom, uh, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and this is very painful, you know, why do something in a very boring, inefficient way? And that is just a very basic thing to do, you know, 
let's say I want to capitalize everything. Boom, done. Let's say I want to lowercase everything. Boom. You know, there's just so much things. And th these are basic things, but I've been working on, you know, certain projects that like that I'm doing <laughs> and I'm working in LaTeX and the things that I've done with Vim, with macros to just save immense amount of time, you won't even believe it. But again, there is so much stuff that you can do. Um, there's a great video by Luke Smith where he shows more in depth how you can use macros. But, you know, if you can think, if you see something that you have to do and you want to systematize it with macros, it's very easy. Okay, so another macro that you could do, let's say we want to get rid of the semicolon because I don't, know, I don't like the semicolon. Then what we can do is we can press Q, B, or actually before we do that, we, we do first... We first search for the semicolon with forward slash semicolon and we'll go to the next semicolon and with N and capital N, we can like cycle through all the semicolons. So it seems that there are, there's not many, but what we do then is we press QB. Then we want to press N to find it and then DW. And then after that, you're done. We just want to keep repeating the cycle. So then we press at B and it will just keep deleting it. And in this case, there wasn't many, but let's say there was, who knows, you know, God knows how many. Let's say there was a thousand. You can just type a thousand, add B, and it will just delete all of it, you know? And it's as simple as that. Until it runs out, and then it will just be like, kind of in a loop, but because it's such a basic program, it'll just, it'll be fine. <laughs> and yeah, it's as simple as that. This is literally just the surface level. You can do so much insane stuff. Um, you can press, you can use sed, which is like a whole Linux program in itself. You know, you can do sed, we can replace a phrase. So we've got the word here, nin chen, which means like without kind of, and let's say we want to replace it with the word, um, von, <laughs> you know, just random word. And this will do it for every single. So the asterisk means for all lines, for any line every time. And then boom, it will just replace it. So it seems we only had it once there, but you can really do this for anything. You get the point. Extremely powerful. If you truly learn, you don't even have to spend, like it seems very hard, but honestly, if you spend like, maybe an hour, two hours, you'll learn how to use that at a basic level. And slowly you just pick it up. Slowly you're like, okay, wait, how do I do this? And then you'll learn it, pick it up, and then you'll just slowly get more efficient. And there's also a whole thing uh, called the Vim Tutor. I think it comes with any Vim installation. I think this is actually what default Vim looks like, essentially. And it just tells you. It tells you, oh, okay, I can use uh, H, J, K, and V. I mean, you can also use the arrow keys. I use the arrow keys. It's a bit normy, but um, I don't know. I just like using it. And it'll just teach you all the things. Oh, okay, if I press Control A, then it'll go to the end or append. Okay. Um, you know, editing a file. You know, it'll tell you how to save, how to quit, um, anything, you know. Oh, okay, I want to delete multiple lines. I can do two, delete, boom. You know, like <laughs> a lot of this stuff, you know, but maybe I should have just shown this. But um, again, go through Vim Tutor. I don't think I even finished it. I did a bit and then I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But honestly, there is so much to Vim. It's like an insane program. It's, it's insane. Like, it's like an iceberg. You know, those iceberg videos. It's like one of those in itself. But yeah, I hope this video, you know, maybe you got a little bit inspired to use Vim. You can see the power of it. There's so much insane stuff with it. Please go try it out, research it. You know, but it's if it's not for you, it's not for you, you know. If you're not really doing that much editing on the command line or text editors, then maybe there is no need for you to learn, you know. But it's up to you. It's very interesting. It's helped me out a lot. And I love it, you know. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment below. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.